Spotlight is proudly sponsored by HEC Media, St. Louis's home for arts, education, and culture. It's one of the top three or four art fairs in the country. Outstanding artists on all sides of you. Come on out and join us at the St. Louis Art Fair. Today on Spotlight, it's all about the St. Louis Art Fair. Meet a duo that uses nature as inspiration for their work. Plus, a pastel artist who learned his craft from his dad, why he uses sand in some of his paintings. And then a program that sets artists up with mentors. But first, people travel from all over the world for this art extravaganza. It's Sunday and you're watching the multiple Emmy Award winning Spotlight. This year marks the 29th anniversary of the St. Louis Art Fair. HEC Media takes a look back at the first quarter century of this world-class event. Like any work of art, it began with a simple idea. People showed up when the art fair opened that first year. I was like, where did all these people come from? Like any work of art, the bigger the idea, the bigger the impact. It's one of the top three or four art fairs in the country. Like any work of art, the beauty is in the details. I think covering all aspects of art is something that opens up the art world to everyone. Every year on the second weekend in September, the city of Clayton transforms into the village of imagination known as the St. Louis Art Fair, presented by the Centene Charitable Foundation. But this year is special. This year, the St. Louis Art Fair turns 25. 25 years is a long time. I feel like we're established. <laughs> I think that the art fair itself is really a shining beacon. It's part of the fabric, part of the culture that's become of our city. I can't imagine doing without it. It's my favorite weekend of the year. We're moving, we're evolving. Uh, we've been here for 25 years, so yes, it's exciting to celebrate our past, but look at where we're going in the future. You know, the arts are just another way that we connect as a community. It breaks down barriers in ways that, that we desperately need in St. Louis and beyond. So I think having those conversations around art or that start with art help lead us to other ways that we can connect. You know, just walking around, seeing friends. The greatest experience is to see the community come together enjoying themselves, sharing something. So how did this world-class art fair get its start? Clayton Mayor Harold Sanger witnessed the birth. In 1993 was really the embryo of the art fair. It was created by Mayor Uchatel and his wife, Susan. Ben and Susan Uchatel pictured downtown Clayton as a blank canvas and then thought of a way to introduce some color. So I was the mayor of Clayton at that time. The idea of having an art fair that was a regional, national, major art fair seemed inviting and good. We moved very quickly, developed hard over the summer, and worked our tails off. It started as on only a couple of streets in Clayton. Now it occupies almost every street in downtown Clayton. Every year, artists from all over the world try to get one of the coveted spots at the St. Louis Art Fair. Typically, more than 1,000 apply, but only 181 are accepted. The difficult decision about who gets into the show is made by a five-person jury, charged with making sure the fair offers both quality and variety. For many years, the jury process has always been sort of this mysterious thing that takes place behind a closed curtain. <laughs> and for us, it's important to make sure that it's as transparent as possible. We schedule at least 30 hours for the jury process, which is much longer than the art fair is actually open to the public. They have such a 
high rate of, of artists applying, they really have a great pool to choose from and it keeps the show uh, top notch, uh, which keeps the people coming back um, excited and interested in understanding a different level of, of, of artwork. What began with a simple idea has grown into an art fair with tremendous impact, not just on the artists, not just on the visitors, and not just on the bottom line. What the St. Louis Art Fair has done in its first 25 years is to prove that this city, in the middle of the country, has earned a special place at the center of the world of art. It's hard to know whether the fair will become even bigger over the next 25 years, but the first 25 years have proven that this fair always strives to become even better. HEC Media, recognized, celebrated, honored time and again for excellence in the industry. Find all of the award-winning content at hecmedia.org. Mark your calendars for the 2022 St. Louis Art Fair, taking place September 9th through the 11th. Go behind the art with HEC Media's Meet the Artist series at youtube.com slash meet the artist. Hello, my name is Glenn Woods and I am a ceramic artist specializing in crystalline glazes. Hi, I'm uh, Keith Herbrand and I'm also a ceramic artist and uh, together we are known as the Pottery Boys. We make a variety of functional and decorative pottery. Our primary source of clay is porcelain, but we oftentimes will use a blend of porcelain and white stoneware. For about the last 10 years, we've been specializing in a glaze called a crystalline glaze. We try to make our work a little bit different than just the average piece by doing some alterations. I like to do a lot of beading, carving, piercing. We use uh, nature as a source of inspiration for a lot of the pieces that we make. Not so literal that you look at it and say, oh, wow, that's a flower or that's a gourd. But uh, if you look at them, I do have some pieces that do look like gourds. And then you look around and you see, oh, the other pieces also have some of that same voice. When people look at our work, oftentimes they just kind of see it without seeing all the details. The closer you get to the piece, you notice a lot of color variation and texture variation. That's really important to me for it not to scream, oh, look at the color transition, but to just have this natural appeal because of the color transitions. Sometimes when we glaze a piece, it'll have up to seven different glazes on it. We're trying to get a transition from color to color. And before we glaze, we take the time to really draw everything out. We spend a lot of time with the form before we put any glaze on it. And we try to use the glaze in a way that emphasizes the alterations that we are making to the piece or enhance it in a way that we find pleasing. We make both decorative and functional pieces. I primarily focus on the functional aspect of our work and Glenn really works uh, with the decorative, more um, artistic pieces. And together we, uh, uh, we think we make a pretty good body of work. We have a lot of really nice new pieces that we'd like you to take a look at. It's a little bit better than trying to check it out online to see it in person. So come on out and join us at the St. Louis Art Fair. My name is Richard Wilson. I'm a pastel artist. I also do oil paintings. My dad was an artist. Ever since I was a little boy, I used to watch him draw me and my brothers. And uh, he was also a sign painter. Uh, and I used to help him paint signs when I was little, you know, and uh, lived in a little small town called Canada, North Carolina. And all the signs in that town were done by my dad, most of the signs. And so um, that's why I got my love for art, you know, uh, is from my dad. When you come to the show, not only are you gonna, um, I'm gonna be able to share historical elements of the painting, but I can also uh, share design elements and why I position things where I position them and uh, how I create like my surfaces. Uh, like I use like sand in some of my work. Like this piece behind me is done on watercolor paper. 
but I wanted texture uh, in certain areas. So I added sand to the paper uh, by adding it to some uh, clear gel medium and then put it on top. And then on their uniform, if I wanted to look like cotton, you know, I put more sand in that area. So when I go over with the pastel, it looks like cotton t-shirt or cotton shirt. A lot of my paintings are of figures and landscapes. Most of the girls in my paintings are my daughters and the boys are my nephews. And I use them in my paintings because in the media, you didn't see positive images of African-Americans as much. And I knew that that was different in my life, you know, cause I saw them all the time. And so when I started doing work, I wanted to start showing those images. I started doing shows all over the country and people would come to my booth and they would be inspired. And then I, I started getting a lot of schools, uh, administrative teachers and principals, they'll see my work and they invite me to the schools to ask, them, ask me to come and speak and encourage young people to follow their dreams like I have as a full-time artist. So I came up with this clever idea. I said, you know, since I'm going to these schools, why not do something, um, come up with an eye-catching series that teaches a bit of history that they don't teach us in school. So I came up with this series called Shadow Series. And I do a lot of research because like, when I was in school, I never heard of Bessie Coleman, uh, the first African-American female aviator. And I was like, wow, her story is so inspiring. You know, she taught herself a whole nother language, taught, taught herself French so that she could go to France and get her pilot license because she was denied the education here in America. So I did a painting of her and the little girl in the picture is my daughter. And she's like, she has her hand like this. She's like saluting because she can now see her dreams because of Bessie Coleman. And so that's my way of, of sharing history that we weren't taught in school. And I think it's a very important history because not only will it help, uh, you know, African American, but it'll help everybody. You know, I think sharing that history and seeing how these people endured, you know, um, injustice and, and they still uh, achieve dreams and then also try to help others achieve their dreams as well. And so that's, I feel like that's something that I can do, you know, to contribute. Another place to find art that shows St. Louis pride later on Spotlight. The Emerging Artists Program initially was a program to help students and introduce students into the art fair world, but it was very limited at first. There was really an educational component that was missing. In 2010, the Emerging Artists Program was revamped and it became the Emerging Artists as Entrepreneurs Program. The Emerging Artists as Entrepreneurs program is open to people of all ages, and it is meant to be an introduction into the art fair world for up and coming artists or artists that are looking for a change in their lives. So the Emerging Artists as Entrepreneurs program is a two year program. These emerging artists get a chance to shadow experienced artists that serve as mentors. The first year, we're working with mentors. We're actually getting to anywhere from learning how you might want to pack your van and get ready for shows. And we worked with them. We helped them put up a book. We got to watch them in action and them interacting. And that gave such an additional eye-opening experience because a lot of times these patrons are just a different breed of patron. And it's just neat to see what excites them, it just helped us out a lot. This is a program that absolutely helps people who want to break into the art scene. Um, not only because of all of the, the assistance that they get from other artists who have been doing this for a long time, but also just the behind the scenes information that you get that nobody would normally have. To be able to actually assist in helping to put up tents, talking to the artists about how they put their artwork in the tent, the whole process of getting selected for the art fair in the first place. I mean, this was just invaluable and I'm so, so lucky to attend this. That second year, we got to actually sell our work and that was just completely amazing. I, I can't speak even higher. It just helped me to focus and to, you know, basically Get your act together, tighten up these things, really work on it. Do you work on your marketing? How to work social media? It was just completely invaluable. The whole program 
was designed to help us to become more successful as artists. And it really helped me to be able to market my work a lot better. And it's been evident in that I've been able to get into so many galleries, so the benefits have been great. The Emerging Artists Entrepreneurs Program is a wonderful way for artists to learn if the business side of participating in art shows is something that they want to pursue. You would probably be surprised to learn, but the vast majority of them decide not to become an art show artist. The reason is because it is such hard work and we don't want to pull any punches with these artists. We really want these emerging artists to experience everything. And so the vast majority of them use this experience to continue their careers in other ways, but some have stuck with it and have become professional art show artists. For those that are interested, go to our website, www.stlouisartfair.com, and we hope that you will consider applying and take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. The 2022 St. Louis Art Fair happens next weekend, September 9th, 10th, and 11th in downtown Clayton. Stop by the HEC Media Spotlight booth to meet the artists. Hi, I'm Sandy Rupert. This is my husband, Brad. Hi. And we um, innovate sustainable and acoustically functional artwork that is created from the remnants we rescue from a friend who makes cowboy hats. We do figurative animals and we do abstracts as well. I've been doing art and Sunday has too since we were, you know, small kids. We used to work in corporate America, did art shows on the side. And basically eight years ago, we met Trent Johnson, who owns Greeley Hatworks. And I said, you know, can you give me a tour of, of your hat shop? Because I had no idea how hats were made. So he's given us a tour and in the back, he had scraps of felt like this laying around in the back. And I said, what do you do with those? And he goes, they've been going to the landfill for over a hundred years because it's a hundred year old company. He's the fourth owner. Uh, he goes, but if you can use them, I'll start saving them for you. And uh, played around with it, started coming up with some ideas. And, you know, eight years later, here we are. Every piece we do, goes back and forth between the two of us multiple times. We both work on every single piece, but we have very different separate jobs. We stay in our own lanes and we collaborate on things, but we don't do each other's job. And that is the secret to our success. Um, and a happy marriage. And a happy marriage, right. For instance, We'll say, let's do a Herod, or a client will ask us if we've ever done one. I will source multiple images that I then kind of, I always say I kind of Frankenstein them together and I take different parts and pieces from different images and I create a drawing that um, then Brad takes that drawing and he enlarges it with an old school overhead projector and cuts everything out of wood. So. Every single one of our pieces has a multi-layered sub-sculpture of wood underneath of it. And then um, Brad starts cutting the felt. He cuts every single piece by hand and individually nails each piece down. I create the face pieces out of layers of metal that I hand paint and they actually serve the purpose of covering up the last row of nails and then providing the heart and soul of, of every piece. So every single piece goes back and forth between the two of us multiple, multiple times before they're finished. We always told our kids to look at, look at things in a new way. And I guess that's what I ask people to do with this too. It's like, maybe we're teaching them to look for things that, you know, for what they could be and not what they are. The name is Craig Yankst and I create mainly uh, block prints. 
I'm predominantly what I would call a narrative artist. I like to um, feed off of stories. I'm going to be showing a lot of music stuff, so uh, those are inspired obviously by, by lyrics and stories of the people themselves. And then eventually it goes into a drawing or a sketch and that sketch gets drawn to scale. Uh, the sketch then has to be reversed because it's got to go on the block reverse to get your image. And, and sometimes I'll draw on a transparent paper, but oftentimes I'll use the computer to flip the image. And then once I have the image flipped, I'll go ahead and retrace it onto the block. And then once it's on the block, I begin to carve that out. And that's probably still one of the most difficult parts for me is, is knowing what to carve away and what to leave. You know, over, my, over the years, I've seen probably about nine different strategies uh, in dealing with shadow and light, uh, hatching, cross hatching, um, all various ways to go ahead and carve just a simple black and white image. Um, but generally, I will tell students or beginners, undercarve your work, carve less, because you can always carve away more. You can print it, look at it, and then you can go back to the block and still carve away more. But once a piece is carved away, it's, it's very difficult to go ahead and replace. It's a real honor to be in the show. It's just outstanding artists on all sides of you. It's always a treat to come back to St. Louis. Bringing you culture and community. Find all of HEC's positive programming and award-winning content at HECmedia.org. The St. Louis Art Fair isn't the only place in town to experience beauty. The Soulard Art Gallery is celebrating St. Louis area artists with their current show. We're here in Soulard Art Gallery at 12th and Russell. This is the St. Louis show by St. Louis area artists. It's all about life in St. Louis as we know it, and as these people, as artists, are reflecting that life. They work in photography, painting, sculptures, ceramics. It's just an awesome display of St. Louis as we know it. You're just gonna feel like you're at home. This is an invitational show, and area artists all over the area of St. Louis can enter. We were fortunate with this show to have so many quality entries. We couldn't even accept them all, there were so many. And we are fortunate for this St. Louis show to have Tanetta Fredrickson as our curator. It's a big job and we're glad that she did it. The reason to do this show is to celebrate the city that we love. St. Louis is an awesome city, awesome architecture, wonderful artists, it is displayed in this work. We've got about 60 pieces in this show that represent St. Louis as we know it, as it was, and as it will be. I think when people walk in the door, they're gonna first of all feel comfortable because we're not a little elitist gallery, we're just a common good gallery. Um, and they're gonna feel at home because they're gonna know a lot of these places like the Arch, Union Station, the sandwich shop that they go to, things like that, and the Fox. I mean, they're gonna know those places. Sula Art Gallery is a co-op. There are 14 of us here. Part of the, our goal is to invite the community in. By inviting the community into shows like STL, we fulfill a need in the area for artists and for us, and it helps get those people the opportunity for exposure. We hope to see you at this awesome St. Louis show where the artists have flaunted their pride in St. Louis by their work. It will floor you because it's wonderful work. It runs through September the 16th. And for more information, go to our website, www.soulardartgallery.com. You can find the stories featured in today's show along with past episodes and more at hecmedia.org forward slash spotlight.
A preview of the 2022 Arts and Faith Interfaith Concert, plus how drones are helping save crops and farms. Thanks for watching Spotlight. Join us next Sunday at 9:30 a.m. on KPLR 11.